Okay, guys, I've been getting some queries in the comments of some of my uh, videos that I developed using microcontrollers such as the macro keypad. Whether I have an inno file available, because obviously some of you are perhaps more familiar with the Arduino IDE uh, instead of platform IO, and some have indicated that you're kind of beginners and you're not quite not good with code and you're not quite sure how to go about that. It is actually quite simple, so I thought rather than create inno files for all my projects because I tend to develop a platform IO for reasons I'll discuss in just a second. Um, I will do a little video in here and showing you how you can convert the platform IO code and put it in a folder that uh, the Arduino IDE will recognize and work with and you can compile it um, using it. So the first thing that we have is, let me get rid of this text here. Um, this is a typical folder of a platform IO project. So the first thing to mention here is that this particular project, which is actually a, um, uh, it was a part of my um, series that I did on um, the ASP32S3 OTG board. And it actually, has a display on it, this OTG board, and you will notice that in the platform IO ini file, which is where in platform IO, this is where you define all your settings and things, you will have um, several sections there to keep an, an eye out for. LibDepths uh, shows you what libraries you have imported using the Platform IO Library Manager, which we'll look at in a minute. So this one has the Bodma TFT ESPI um, library, and the version that I imported at the time was 2.5.34. Now on Platform IO, you can actually change this syntax here, um, which I won't go into right now, but you can easily find on the documentation. You can actually tell it always to use the latest version or to use a specific version, uh, etc. But that's the version that was last used while it was compiled. Then secondly, one of the reasons I do use Platform IO is it's just more powerful. It, the um, user interface, the, the, um, uh, in, the using Visual Studio code is more powerful than what the uh, Arduino IDE is. Uh, it has way better IntelliSense, which is important to me, since I have bad memory and I can't, often I can't remember all the uh, um, variables that you have to pass to, to uh, methods and uh, so on. And here, for instance, using that uh, TFT ESPI library, it actually has a, a user setup.h file, which you are meant to edit and change all these values for the particular TFT display that you are using, and it will vary. Um, you might have to specify a different driver, it, it'll have different sizes, uh, width and height, and so on, and so on, and different pins that are used for different purposes, frequency. So in Platform I.O., you can actually set them as build flags, and you don't have to go and um, edit the user setup H file. Why is it important? Because if you ever update the um, in the, the uh, Arduino IDE, if you ever update the uh, library, and this can happen automatically, because sometimes it will uh, come up when you first go in there and it says, hey, there are some updates to your libraries, you want to install them now, and you say yes, and even if it's using the same library, it will happily overwrite the user setup H file, and you have to go in there again and actually edit these values, which is a pain in the neck. And this is a much better way of dealing with it, because you can actually um, update the driver, and the settings will re be retained in the platform.io.ini file. In any case, 
the platform IO any file is the first thing you will look at when you get the platform IO uh, project. Uh, it'll tell you what board was being used, and of course, you will have to set the same board in your um, Arduino IDE. And it tells you, as I said, what libraries are used, and you'll have to go to the library manager in the Arduino IDE and actually find that particular library and um, install it and so on. And if, if, of course, if you encountered this, you would have to go into the setup aids file and make sure that you set all these values in the uh, setup file as well. However, um, this particular project is not what people were querying me on. They were querying me on the um, the macro keypad, which is this one here. And if you look at its platform IO file, you find that there is nothing in there at all. There's no library and there's just the board. It's a Chao ESP32 S3 board. So this one is even easier. You don't even have to um, deal with the libraries. And you first thing to notice here is you'll see that it has a git and a git ignore. These two um, you can totally ignore and you don't have to copy anything in there. The reason that they are there is because um, I actually published this project to GitHub and GitHub, as you can see from its name, uses Git as a, um, a source control manager and um, it's a popular thing that people use nowadays. So that is of no significance. Likewise, whatever you find in these dot um, folders, you can totally ignore. You don't have to um, uh, copy those. Um, now let's go into platform IO and you'll see this reflected uh, in there. So here we have the, um, there is, as I said, there's a PIO and a VS code one. We're not going to look at that. But um, the way platform IO works is that if you've got any um, C++ files, like here's a macro pad CPP and a BLE hit KB CPP. Now I got um, the starting point of those from uh, GitHub as well and from uh, websites, uh, other people, but I made extensive modifications to it. I decided not to create a library based on those. I could. But I, there's no no point. Uh, it's much easier to put the CPP files straight in the source folder and put uh, make header files for them and put those in the include folder. However, if you're going to copy this to a, you'll have to copy these into a different folder for Arduino, and you will be putting all of these files, the header files, the CPP files. Uh, and the inner file that will generate um, in one folder. So that makes it even easier. Now this main CPP file over here is actually um, going to be renamed uh, and with an extension of INO. Ino. Um, and we are going to be deleting this Arduino 8 uh, include line because it doesn't need that because the Arduino IDE is always in Arduino mode. Now when you're dealing with platform IO you can actually have different frameworks um, which would be reflected uh, here. See framework is Arduino. Um, if that doesn't say Arduino well then um, there are some other issues which we're not, not going to be dealing with because my projects are always Arduino. Um, I like to keep my code uh, standard and so I can actually use it in on different boards. I can go to the board manager and I can say okay I want to use a, um, a different kind of board, an STM32 or whatever and usually the code doesn't have to be modified it just uh, gets compiled to a different um, low-level code that gets uh, flashed to the board. So um, <clears throat> What are we going to do? Well, let's do it. Um, so this is the macro keypad. And over here, I have um, 
I tend to uh, have platform IO in, in one of my um, nest drives here. Um, where is where we're coming from? But we are going to go to Arduino and I have um, already created a folder, macro keypad. And of course, you can put that folder anywhere that you like. You don't have to follow any um, what, what, exactly what I'm doing here. Um, I have already copied in the CPP and the header files from the include and folder here. The readme file, of course, is generated by platform IO and, and you don't need that. Um, and I've copied those files. Now, the only thing I haven't copied yet is the main CPP file. So let's copy that right now. There we go. Okay, so after copying the file to your folder, you will notice that the um, I've given the folder the name macro keypad, and Arduino insists that the file and the folder name need to be the same, the main file. So if we now go and click on that, we can say macro keypad. And matches the folder name there, and we will change the extension from CPP to INO. INO. It will prompt me if you're sure you want to change the extension, and yes, we do. And now you will notice that the little icon here changed to the Arduino IDE icon because it knows that Inno files are connected to it. Now, if I double click it, it will be opened in the Arduino IDE. So here we go. Arduino IDE is always very slow to get started. Given that this is a very fast PC, it tells you that they are not using the most efficient code to actually compile their IDE in. Anyway, so this is what we have now. Notice that the board has already been set, the Chao ESP32 S3, because that's what I used last. If not, then you'd have to go over here and um, search for the board and select it and to the right COM port and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, the actual Arduino line over here with the H file, you could just delete that and then you can say file save and now it's because we copied the files the other files already into the um, folder notice that these files do have Arduino H at the top there that needs to stay there and the other files there and you know how the Arduino code works. It's actually part of the C++ kind of heritage, I think. Um, if they got double quotes on the names, that means, okay, these files are expected to be in the local folder where the Inno file is. And if they got little angle brackets around them, it says, okay, this is a generic um, library or whatever, and it's coming actually from the specialized folders that the Arduino IDE actually creates when you install it. So it knows about all these things here. So now we should be able to say, okay, go and verify. It's compiling right now. And as you noticed, I made no changes to the code at all. Yep, it was um, successful. 
So that is it. I made no changes to the code at all, except I removed that one line that says uh, Arduino.h there. I renamed its name from main CPP or whatever the main file is going to be called in the pro in the project that you're converting. Gave it macro keypad, uh, inno name, file name, and that's basically it. It's as simple as that. Now, if as I showed you before, if your um, let's go there for a second to remind you. Um, we are in the Arduino folder, but uh, when we go to the where I keep my platform IO files, and I think we were looking at this one before. So if there is a libdeps over here with um, a, a library that's used, a Bodma TFT ESPI, as I said before, 2.534, when you go into the, if that's the case, when you, when you open the file in the Arduino IDE, you would have to go to the library manager and find the same library here. And it's already found it, TFT ESPI by Bodmer. That's the one that we were using. Now, the latest version apparently is 2.543, which it has installed, but um, you could certainly try this one. It'll probably work, but some of the libraries in the uh, I've had problems actually with this very TSP ESPI one on account that um, which board was it now? It was one of the TT Go boards or something that has like a little display on it as well. Um, and the actual developer of the board had on its website some sample code and it actually had a version of the uh, TFT ESPI which is not actually even listed here. It was like uh, two point something or other, which is actually not listed here. And it's if I selected any one of those, it didn't work anymore. So these things can happen. But um, and if you want to use exactly the same version, then the um, platform IO any file had in it, you could still do that over here. If in case you did run into problems, you can install it and so on. So that's the only. Thing, but because this uh, macro keypad doesn't use any uh, external libraries, it has its own files. I decided not to make libraries out of these. Why? Because they work as this. I made extensive changes to these files, um, which originally I actually downloaded from GitHub and I put in here um, where it came from. And Macro pad H, I think I developed myself. So um, that is um, what you have to do. So it's as simple as that. It's not very hard. You just take the files, put them all in one folder, give the folder the same name as the inner file that you put in it, and then you can open it using the Arduino IDE, and if needed, if there are libraries involved, you can go and um, install those, and then take out the Arduino H file in the actual uh, main file here that has a setup and the loop in it, and you should be in business. There shouldn't be any other changes to be made because the Arduino IDE and the uh, platform IO that are code compatible, as far as I know. So that's it. In any case. I hope this was helpful. I think it is uh, better to know how to change the actual code. If you want to use the Arduino IDE, then it is for me to create a whole bunch of inno files because um, that way you don't learn anything, do you? In any case, if you like the videos here, then um, please subscribe and like and little bells and whatever whistles there are. <laughs> and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.